I confess that climate change was not a priority for me until my young adult sons intervened. I know that I am not the only boomer or Gen Xer to have had such a conversation with their millennial or Gen Z children or grandchildren. Four, climate youth, four youthful climate activists wrote last year, for children and young people, climate change is the single greatest threat to our future. We are the ones who will have to clean up the mess you adults have made. And we are the ones who are most likely to suffer now. Children are more vulnerable than adults to the dangerous weather events, diseases, and other harms caused by climate change. Even if we're not concerned about the future, climate change already assaults us. United Nations scientists warn that extreme weather phenomena such as floods, fires, droughts, and storms are increasing in intensity and frequency, have exacerbated global hunger and malnutrition through crop destruction, and have enabled wider spread of malaria and dengue. Over the past decade, weather-related events displaced an estimated 23.1 million people on average each year, with the majority of refugees coming from countries that are most vulnerable and least ready to adapt to the impacts of climate change. The cause is clear. Fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas are by far the largest contributor to global climate change, accounting for over 75% of global greenhouse gas emissions and nearly 90% of all carbon dioxide emissions. As greenhouse gas emissions blanket the Earth, they trap the Earth the sun's heat. This leads to global warming and climate change. The world is now warming faster than at any point in recorded history. Shamefully, we Americans are the worst offenders. The United States is home to less than 5% of global population, but is responsible for more than a quarter of the world's carbon emissions leaving more defenseless members of the human family at greatest risk. We will be held accountable for our abuse of the environment. Hayom harat ha'olam, our prayer book proclaims. Today is the birthday of the world. But our sages teach that Rosh Hashanah does not mark the first day of creation when God said, let there be light. Instead, Rosh Hashanah is the anniversary of the sixth day when the first humans were created. On that same day, the rabbis taught, Adam and Eve were con commanded not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Only an hour later, they sinned, eating the fruit. And an hour after that, they were judged. Rosh Hashanah, therefore, comes to be known as Yom Adin, the day of judgment. Today we stand before God who has every reason to judge the generations living today for the very same sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden. Like our mythical at first ancestors, humanity has, for more than a century, been taking too much fruit from the garden that God has provided. Torah describes two special trees in the Garden of Eden the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. However, Rabbi Tamar Elad Applebaum teaches a midrash which claims that there was only one tree in the Garden of Eden. Its fruit bore the knowledge of good and evil, but the tree as a whole was the tree of life. At times it was called the tree of life, at others the tree of knowledge after its fruit. The problem, Rabbi Elad Applebaum suggests, is that instead of seeing the whole, the magnificence of the tree of life, taking a bit here and there, Adam and Eve identified what looked best to them, the fruit, and they greedily consumed it. Since the Industrial Revolution, humanity has looked at our planet, our tree of life, that is home to us all, not as a tree of life, but as a source of the fruit, resources we consume. 
we have devoured that fruit greedily, at first unaware of the consequences and then denying them. We have chosen short-term economic prosperity over our children's future. Time and again, we have elected the simplest method of powering our economy, burning yesterday's fuels with abandon instead of transitioning to sustainable alternatives. Thus, we have damaged our tree of life, our planet, creating a climate crisis that threatens all humanity. Rabbi Elad Applebaum urges us to consider that the most important word God says to Adam and Eve is lo, no. But as for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you must lo, not eat of it. No is a boundary. We can only take so much of that tempting fruit from the tree of life if we want to keep it alive and life-giving. The Midrash teaches that the ram caught in the thicket by its horns, the one that Abraham found to offer in the place of his son Isaac, had been there since the days of creation, tangled up in the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Jewish people would have died after one generation had that ram not been there to take Isaac's place. Our salvation in the epic past is tied up with negotiating those twin trees, those two trees in one. In our own day, in a different way than in Abraham's, time is running out. Let the ram and its horns, its shofarot, teach us that for our children, as for Isaac, salvation is possible even in the last minute. Like Abraham, we must resist the temptation to sacrifice our future on the altar of our desire to enjoy the earth's fruit without limit. The time to put down the proverbial butcher's knife is now. Let the shofar, the ram's horn, stir us to urgency. We must work to end our reliance on fossil fuels. No action could more effectively avert God's harsh judgment and the judgment of our own children and grandchildren. No action would be a better birthday present to this warming world.